Welcome back to The Deep Plea. In this podcast, we aim to have deep conversations about all sorts of interesting topics to gain more insight and wisdom from the world around us. My name is Karthik. The guy on the other side of the mic is Sven. Hello, hello. And today we're going to talk about modern versus traditional dating. Let's start with the quote for today. But this 50-50 stage is only a second and intermediate stage of growth for men and women, not an end point. Side effects of this trend towards sexual similarity can be seen as a major cause of today's unhappiness and intimacy. The trend towards the trend toward 50/50, excuse me, has resulted in economic and social equality, but also in sexual neutrality. Bank accounts are balancing while passions are fizzling out. Men are less macho while sex and violence continue to increase on TV and in the movies. Women are more in control of their economic destiny while they go in increasing numbers to therapists and doctors to cope with stress-related disease. Why is this happening? In my workshops and consult consultations, I hear independent and successful women complaining that many of today's men have become wimps, too weak and ambiguous ambiguous to really trust. Sensitive and affectionate men are complaining that many, many of today's women have become ball busters, too hardened and emotionally guarded up to fully embrace. Is this the ultimate expression of human sexual wisdom and evolution, or is there another step to take? David Dida, The Way of the Superior Man from 1997. Sven, take it away for us. Yes, yes. So this quote is referring to how in modern times uh, there's kind of been <clears throat> a demasculization in a way, and that comes from both parties, whereas women today have the ability to provide, whereas throughout human history, traditionally men were the ones that provided. That was a factor for finding a partner throughout all of human history. And that is one of the key factors that men would use in order to be able to gain a spouse. And in today's world, women are able to be completely self-reliant and work their own jobs. And men don't really necessarily have that quality. <clears throat> and I think, <clears throat> sorry, and I think this plays a big role um, as to why men might feel um, unencouraged, uh, you know, maybe not their full, uh, their best ability. Um, I think, you know, when it comes to dating apps, all these different things, these stimulation things, women are getting more choices uh, because, you know, now that they have provided for themselves, they don't really need to look out for anything except their own wants and desires. Whereas men kind of need to have an X factor uh, that's aside from basic necessities. Um, you even see today with fashion, a, a woman might be like, oh, I, I'm not going to date this man if he wears this type of jeans or something like these like small little things. Obviously, they could be jokes, but you know, you can kind of pinpoint down. Women get very particular about the type of man they want, whereas in the past, the, the pool of people around you was much smaller, and the choices that you had, uh, you know, were just in your in immediate environment, whereas now you kind of have this plethora, this pool of individuals to choose from, from even all over the world if you want. Um, and I think uh, talking about uh, the TV when you see sex and you see all these things on TV, it also is kind of overexposing, especially kids, to these types of things too. And I think that... Uh, that kind of skews their perception about uh, having a partner. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I think in relationships today, you have, like you said, kind of just a, the world is yours. And perhaps yeah. that, that's not the best thing because you try and always look for something better. Um, and perhaps many of today's men, when they go on Tinder, right, they think that they're, they maybe they don't get the matches that they want or they don't have the success that maybe women do. And then they feel like that they are, I guess, sensitive and like they have all these, I guess, problems that they might not actually have or that might be a bit superficial because you're on a dating app. But, you know, if we yeah. kind of step away from that, then obviously women more nowadays are able to provide for themselves and focus on their purpose and mission. Um, but that kind of trend towards 50-50 in this world uh, might not be the best way to move forward in terms of having a relationship because uh, right. a big a big uh, main idea in the way of the superior man is uh, the polarity between relationships and mm. um, basically talks about masculine and feminine poles. Perhaps we'll get into that a bit more, but that's the general idea of a successful relationship is this kind of push and pull, this kind of tug. But if everybody's heading towards 50-50 and that means they kind of align their lives in a way such that they kind of have both their masculine and feminine uh, kind of a combination of both of them in harmony, then perhaps it's not, it might be good in, you know, getting money or getting job or getting status, but not for a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of think that the, the unbalanced part about that is, is that 
you know, a guy is like having a sexy can behavior. Um, you know, we have testosterone, we're much more, uh, you know, aggressive towards sex seeking behaviors. And because of that, I think that it actually creates this unbalance where, you know, for example, data analytics on Twitter shows that men would swipe right on more amounts of women than women would swipe on men. Uh, because of that unbalanced nature, women are more like particular. And, uh, you know, I think that the 50-50 almost kind of makes it so that the guy needs to have some new level of X factor that you never had to have before. Like, yeah, he has like to be the, or yeah, he has to be the 99% or whatever it might be, right. especially if you have the, uh, you know, the world to choose from. So let's yeah. get into our easy question for today. Sven, you already touched on this a little bit, but what effects does social media, television, and other sources of information um, do to our society when they increase their sexual appeal? So this obviously is happening more and more in the modern era with apps like Tinder, TikTok, I mean, even Instagram nowadays just looks like not great. Um, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but uh, um, I think Tinder definitely has turned the kind of sexual dance of dating into like a mobile, like uh, like uh, just like a swiping game, you know? Yeah, Where window shopping. Just, yeah, they're just, yeah, maybe shopping for people, right? Where people are just <laughs> simply reduced to like appearance and just simply by what they, just what they look like. Um, and obviously women on these apps, um, they get sources of information that perhaps push, uh, unrealistic beauty standards. And then they try and look yeah. even better than their competition on this app. So, um, you know, and then if we look into, you talked about this as well. So sex, you know, increasing in the television, right. So yeah. that even young kids on Netflix can just see, <laughs> you know, right. underage people like, kind of doing it but not really and maybe they want to know like oh what is it actually like right? right especially when you talk to like your you know your friends or like you talk about what you're looking at and then perhaps they want the full experience and then they uh you know go and watch porn perhaps and then they believe that uh, a beautiful act is merely transactional um right you know which can be very dangerous in the long term right and yeah obviously uh, in contrast to the past, right? You only had, you kind of had to accept people that were, I guess, I don't, just like a 20 mile radius or something exactly. right, of your home. <clears throat> and you had to learn to love with each other's differences. So like nowadays, if, if uh, someone has a difference or if like someone has a problem, um, I've been guilty of this. And like, maybe you have too. It's like someone has one problem and you think it's just like, oh, this just can't be like i can't right. do this and it's like i don't know it's it's kind of dangerous when you kind of view the world like that when one problem is like a deal breaker and it's, yeah i don't think it's a good way to go sven yeah yeah pre pretty much what you're saying uh especially when it comes to like you said um the the kind of fantasies that people get from being exposed to that type of content uh you, you kind of grow up especially if you're a kid uh, assuming that things are a certain way about dating and you you inorganically or like you know, non-organically, you, you try to enter this type of new world of dating or, you know, romantic uh, nature. And you kind of already have this view that you've gained through the, uh, you know, the Internet or through technology about how things should be. Whereas, you know, usually with things, uh, especially socialization, human nature, these are things that you need to be, you know, you need to do for the first time. You're nervous, like, you know, like you don't know what to expect. It's like, you know, in the past, having a partner and having sex with a partner was like a highlight, you know, it was like a highlight of your life. But now with hookup culture, you know, you can go and have sex with someone and then just leave, not really talk to them again. And it, it takes away that kind of like that it, what should be like intimacy, because at the end of the day, I mean, relationships and dating, it's about procreation and it's about like a real connection. And you break that connection by having hookup culture, this easy access for people to have sex. And I think that's kind of what's devastating, especially now. Uh, my friend's a teacher. He says, you know, kids, even in middle school are you know, they know everything about everything about, you know, sex and porn and all this stuff because they're just exposed to it. And I think that's it's taking the innocence out of a child, like out of childhood and out of curiosity. And, you know, what happens when you're already exposed to all this stuff and then now you're turning 18 and now it's like, it's like, what's next? Like, you know, you kind of get deprived of what could have been an experience. Yeah. When you, uh, when you turn 18, let's say, and you get into your first relationship or, you know, whenever that may be, then it's like your bad habits have piled up for so long 
and that right. if you kind of figure out that like oh maybe i'm doing this thing wrong then you have to undo systematically all the bad habits and thoughts that you have uh yeah. that have had for maybe uh decades you know that's very mm -hmm. possible so that can be a big danger um to just having a good like relationship life even with um even with friends of uh the opposite gender so, so let's get into our hard question for today in the age of instant gratification how can we cultivate patience and resilience in our relationships especially during difficult times sven take this one yeah. away yes i think um you know self-benefiting behaviors going to the gym <clears throat> eating right having healthy activities these can kind of cultivate patience and build you up at the same time and you're not going to be giving into instant gratification behaviors that you otherwise would um so i think that you know especially during difficult times so this is basically like if you've been someone who's been single for a long time maybe your whole life if you've been using you know dating apps and stuff which like we said may not be the best idea and you think that these things have failed you uh, you know, it's always best to try and work on yourself and it's always best to, uh, you know, just develop a sense of patience. It doesn't even have to be an action. Just just truly, you know, you know, be patient with it. Um, and I think most guys that come to these points where they think that, uh, you know, they're never going to find anyone, stuff like that. They do really well by focusing on themselves and getting rid of any, you know, uh, habits that could be detrimental to themselves and to their you know, goals. And I think that there's never any benefit to instant gratification. Um, it, it's just simply just kind of the dopamine reward system, you know, getting what it wants, whether that's even good or bad. It's almost self-destructive for a lot of people. Um, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, I think that we need to bring like the patience and resilience that we build in other aspects of our life to our relationship. So like if we're going to the gym, it's uh, maybe we're having a hard season. Maybe it's been a rough like month or two you know we haven't been going up in weight but our patience and our resilience to keep going right keep trying at it keep trying to lift that heavy weight right yeah. and eventually we'll push through right especially if we're <clears throat> right. giving it our best effort so in that way that we cultivate this this patience right we want to bring it to our yeah. relationship and then in time right we might be pushing at a problem in a relationship but eventually that dam will burst open and uh, perhaps that you know when the dam bursts open the love flows uh right. quite nicely so we can also you know quickly mention like environment here uh such that we we kind of need to reduce our amount of instant gratification outside of relationships so that we bring in that same environment um towards our relationships and probably towards making long-term goals in our relationships right because uh, at the end of the day, delayed gratification is setting your future up to be better, right? So we want to yeah. do the same thing in our relationship. And also something that you said is that, you know, um, we sh as as men, I'll speak from a dude's point of view, that yeah. we shouldn't really be, um, our main purpose in life is not to look for a woman. Our main purpose is our, like, mission of our life, whether that's, uh, get a nice job or i mean uh it could be whatever i think i mean are like protecting women or kids and stuff yeah it could be that as well like having a good family but like um your as a man this is my belief your top priority is your mission your purpose what you want to do with your life and ultimately that's not controlled by what women that you find i don't know how do you feel about that Sven? Yeah, I mean, especially like if you look, if you want to look at the end game, it's like, let's say you did find a woman. It's like, it's no, nothing is set in stone or it's it's not end of story because, you know, maybe, you know, you guys break up, something happens. So you can't, you don't want to have a mentality that it's like, okay, I need to find a woman and then what's next? Because that might not last itself. You know, relationships are hard work. It's not a breeze. And I think that a lot of men out there have this mentality where it's almost like, this material goal that <clears throat> once they get it, they can kind of put it on the shelf like a trophy where it's like, okay, this is done. Boom, boom, boom. Interesting. But you kind of, yeah. yeah, you kind of got to look at it as like it's a relationship and you need that person to be able to boost you more. Like you kind of have to play off each other. And, you know, even finding a person, like you probably think people think so deeply about this stuff, but like, like imagine a, a girl looking at you for who you are and you didn't even notice that she was doing it. You're doing your own thing, but she likes you for you. And you got to realize that that's always possible that, you know, you could just be going about your day and some girl just sees you and she thinks a certain thing about you. But us men, <clears throat> we never think that way. 
we don't think it's beneficial to think that way. But who knows how many times a girl's like looked at you and actually maybe thought something positive, but you've never even considered that to be a possibility. So, you know, try and keep this positive mindset and, and try and like, you know, help yourself to get better. As yeah. Women. women are searching for love, man. Yeah, we're yeah. not the only ones. That's right. So I think that's a good place to end. Yeah. So thank you for tuning into this episode. I appreciate the yeah. supports. Thank you.